thank you all so much for giving yeah the space talk thanks so much like Quinn and Francis for the invites like come here um I yeah it it's it's really helpful for me I literally just finished my PhD at um in anthropology at UC Irvine and I'm starting a um a job as an assistant professor at Colt College so these are the kind of questions which I'm starting to think through in terms of um just yeah directions to take my research so one thing which is really interesting is that like um I I think that like the the thread of web three is something that kind of like circled around in a way I started my PhD back in 2016 wanting to pursue this question um about like basically bitcoin and bitcoin integration as money which then fell off and now is kind of coming back in and I feel is lining up with a few other terms and themes which I've been thinking through so I've separated that into like three sections um the first is just looking through the idea of like acceptable money forms which was yeah as I mentioned just ahead just before that between 2012 to 2016 um in Kenya where there was the launch of a very successful mobile money platform in 2008 known as Mpesa there were lots of movements to try and integrate Bitcoin or cryptocurrency platforms as synonymous um parallel payment systems basically and that was um that's something which picked up a lot of steam especially for people um yeah Lana and kind of like both even looked into this people who were like enthusiastic about pushing cryptocurrencies as like alternates to just cash and everyday money um what ended up obstructing that literally I think about the time that I started my PhD was lots of uncertainty local locally about um how to deal with that from a regulatory response and and how to basically monitor that what ended up happening is that the dominant telecom companies um, shut off all lines of integration. So basically, they were the ones who ended up being the dominating voice on which integrations were accessible for people, especially considering a mobile money ecosystem, which was very dominant in Kenya. What this ended up opening up the way for was very aggressive um, mobile micro lending and gambling systems which are still dominant today so um in fact I'm going to take like a quick diversion to just go to like here sorry that didn't need to be animated um by really aggressive I mean these kind of standards so if now like the kind of systems that involve uh, are involved with like micro loans is literally like if people don't have sufficient funds in their accounts they're given these kind of trigger messages like what you see on the left saying that like you know you don't have funds why don't you take out a loan to basically just like um complete the payment that you're trying to make and a lot of people just like go into that so then what that's also opened up the way for is kind of the text that you see on the right where you've got like loan providers which there's so many of now actually actively reaching out to the person who owes money saying things that like you know you're in breach of your contract we're going to um contact every single person on your phone book and basically force like you know intimidate intimidate you into paying back by just embarrassing you in front of like all of your friends and family um in this case of this text message this is someone who was just like about 45 dollars in debt and was just two days late at the point that they got this text message um so I'd argue that basically what that means is that this kind of like dominating um management of like the mobile money ecosystem in Kenya by like just the very powerful telecom companies meant that you ended up having the introduction of like non-human social finance measures and that comes through in the second point which is my point on like the integration of algorithmic scoring so algorithmic scoring and processes which basically actively analyze every individual's use and interaction with these systems but what's what's really problematic in this sense is that um rather than it being the case of like building on established long-standing credit reporting systems like you might have here in the US or like in many countries in Europe that you guys might be from as well um it's it's basically creating files from people who are no file rather than th thin file borrowers and what tends to happen is that like credit scores that are created from these scoring processes have actually affected people's credit and reasonable repayment options um and because people in turn are only just adjusting to the idea of having credit scores people are generally unaware of their disempowerment from these scoring systems um to add like just additional frustration to that is the fact that a lot of these credit reporting um companies who are often the micro loan um platforms that these telecom companies have enabled they're actually not consistently reporting 
information. So a lot of the credit reports are actually unreliable and unusable. Um, so then while I, I'm, I'm putting a third section of like universal ICs because I, I realize it's, it can sound like this is maybe just a problem for people who are engaging in mobile money systems or, or using microloans. But um, with the increase of things like financial inclusion logics, development plans and national improvement plans, um, systems such as mobile money and all of these digital financial tools are just pushed out aggressively, even when they're not wanted by many people. Um, one example, which I also want to work through is, you know, like during 2020, when many places were basically just like fully prohibiting even use of cash because it's seen as dirty, some of my respondents basically couldn't even um, do their weekly grocery shops because they didn't actually like use mobile money systems and they turned up with cash but weren't allowed to like purchase their, their necessities. So um, I guess like what I also want to start thinking through then just so I don't like yeah eat too much into this because I'm sure I could like talk about this for way longer um, is that with the dominance from telecom companies initially back in 2016 they were prohibiting this by creating limitations on like what else could be done. But there's also a really active and engaging um, like innovation sphere, which is basically like really encouraging that. And then I guess this is something which brings us back to where we are now, that like increasing innovations, activities, and as so many other people have basically spoken about, just new dimensions of Web3 cultures, that could mean that there might be ways of like bypassing this. So I guess I want to ask at the end of this, and maybe this would be something that I'd love the chance to like discuss with a lot of you. Um, yeah, what are the options and is there a way around this or are we just like stuck in this kind of dead-ended, aggressive, algorithmic, um, yeah, hellhole that is the case maybe for many people and is actually excluding many people? Thanks. <laughs>